you ever put your hands on me again, what? I will fucking kill you. We already lost one kid, Tasha. Don't you ever motherfucking forget it. If Tariq dies, his blood is on your hands. Your hands. Yo, what's up? So it's the power of you, the mid-season finale, uh, season six, episode nine, Scorched Earth. You've seen that scene. That was like the moment of the episode where Ghost yanked up Tasha and gave her the mush. The, the, the fucking infamous mush but that was later on this episode so this episode was following up um last week when tasha well the week before when tasha killed keisha and uh on some wesley snipes you know am i my brother's keeper type shit so you know tommy's seeking revenge for keisha's death that's the main premise of his role in this episode and ghost is trying to move forward with his plan to kill jason because jason has been having him do this cat mouse game and He's just been making them, basically, He's they've been his bitch this whole season. So, Ghost wants to put him to bed. And um, so, you know, Tommy's grieving Keisha's death in the beginning, and he brings Cash over to his, son, his, uh, his dad's house, which is played by Jesse Williams. They got him tatted up. That was Jesse Williams. Um, and at least the kid has somebody to, you know, lean on. But I'm sorry. After everything Alicia Marie's been through, I have a hard time really feeling sorry for this kid because Alicia Marie's lost more people than anybody. That little girl's going through fucking hell. Uh, <laughs> Agent Bianca questions Tommy about why didn't he call in the, uh, Keisha's body when he found her. She accuses him of the murder, but he's like, he wouldn't do that. That's his girl. And she's like, well, we'll be watching you. And he was like, do your fucking job. Like, get off my nuts. So as soon as she gets done dealing with him, she starts talking to Dre, uh, a.k.a. Takashi Snitch 9, and he tells her where Tommy's warehouse is located. So, you know, just to get her off his nuts. And she's like, you know what? You were singing a different tune when we had this monitor on your, on, on your ankle. And he's like, look, I'll give you these, this information. If she says, okay, if this is accurate, we'll leave you alone. So she, he, give, he gives her the location of the warehouse. Um, and like I say, ghosts is moving forward with his plan to kill Jason. So the plan was, he calls Jason, he's like, look, we can get into some real legit business, real estate. I want you to meet me this afternoon. You can't bring any guns, it's well detected, metal detector, security, gun, you know, Jason's kind of iffy about it. Um, but the whole plan is when they get to the elevator, Tommy's supposed to plant the gun inside the elevator box. And Ghost will proceed to, you know, lay out the plan as such. But so, <laughs> Yeah, that's the plan. And then you got Rashad Tate, and he's telling Ramona Garrity he's decided to move on from James from his campaign. He's been nothing but trouble. And she fakes it, basically, and she's like, okay, you're right. We'll move forward. But she doesn't know. he's She's already now working for the rival candidate, that white lady. And Ramona and his white lady tell James they want him to be lieutenant governor to help her black, her campaign as far as securing the black vote. So... Tate doesn't know all of this just yet. Um, they go back to Dre. And he's calling Jason about being his new distro. Jason's kind of over it. He's not interested. But then when Dre tells him that there's a lead that the feds have on Tommy and his crew and that, you know, you're going to lose a lot of money and product because the feds are literally about to raid his spot. So this gets Jason's attention. And Jason says, we'll be in touch. Um now, this right here is the, the meat and, and bones of this episode, the meat and potatoes. When Ghost comes to Tasha and says, hey, we got to go meet with Tariq's teacher. It's a parent-teacher conference. And Tasha's giving him attitude like, no, I, I got stuff to do. I got to work. So that was strike one right there. That's when Ghost is already kind of aggravated by her. So he ends up going there by himself. And the teacher's high out of his mind because, of course, you know, Tariq's selling pills to this teacher and the teacher's telling Ghost, you know, well, James about how good Tariq's been in class and how he's even been getting extra credit for his after-school job. And Ghost is like, after-school job? He was like, yeah, at the daycare. And Ghost is like, what? And then when Ghost went into the daycare initially to, to talk to Tasha, he seen a big, you know, guap of money. And um, that kind of put everything in sync. And he's like, I know this bitch ain't got my son selling drugs out of her daycare. <laughs> so... That was what set it off. And I don't know, on this show, everybody's a cat burglar because everybody finds a way to break in each other's houses without alarms going off. And uh, when Tasha comes to her apartment, Ghost is sitting there, kicked back with his feet up. And she's like, what the fuck did you, how did you get in here? And that's when they start arguing. 
and going back and forth, back and forth. And everything from season one up until now has built up to this moment where she brings up everything. And he tells her, hey, if you don't fucking stop that shit, you got my son selling drugs out of this fucking school, out of your daycare. I'm going to shut that bitch down and I'm going to take Yaz away from you. That's when she snaps and she's like, I'm going to tell everything the feds did, including Terry Silver, the lawyer that she was sleeping with that he strangled in the parking lot. So when she says that, the animal comes out in this nigga. And like I say, Ghost has been passive aggressive and nonviolent all season. He snapped. This is the first time you get to see violent Ghost. And when she brought up Terry Silver... It's kind of like she put a mirror up to his face and she's telling him who the fuck he is. And he snaps, grabs her by the arm, lunges her to the fridge and starts, you know, threatening her. And then she says, I'll scream. He covers her mouth. It, it was it was real intense. <laughs> you know, and then, of course, after that, that's when he mushes her in the forehead. He's like, yo, if Tariq dies, his blood is on your hands. That was a powerful fucking scene. I think every dude could feel that. Any man that's ever had an argument with his woman or mother of his child and you wanted to take it there but you you didn't but you wanted to that mush was for everybody <laughs> you could feel that shit a lot of people was upset at ghost for it but i think tasha deserved it it wasn't like he slapped her or he punched her in the face i mean when you got this woman got their son selling drugs out of the daycare center i mean for god's sakes uh you how do you justify that and she's like oh i'm trying to protect him he's like get out of here you just want to fucking live your life luxury and like I got keep telling people, this is a lot of this is based off fifties personal issues with his ex, his uh, ex, and his son, and you're seeing a lot of that being played out in the series. Um, and literally after this is over, Ghost calls in the daycare center to the cops, and the feds raid the place. Tasha has it all cleaned up, so nothing is found. But Tasha's girl that she had helping her sell, you know, move weight with the other girls at the nightclub. She's like paranoid. She's like, I, I can't do this no more, Tasha. This is crazy. This is about to get shut down sooner or later. So she leaves. So now Tasha is like, oh, really, Ghost? So now she's upset. So now she's really about to seek revenge. And because the feds couldn't find anything at Tasha's place, they go straight to Tommy's warehouse, and that's when they get Tommy and his crew. Now, Tommy isn't there at the moment, but Spanky and Two-Bit are. And when they get arrested and they see Tommy, you know, peeking over across the fence, that leads them to believe that Tommy set them up. So now Tommy has even more enemies on his side. So now you got Ghost, because Tommy believes Ghost killed Lakeisha. You got Benny, you know, I'll get into that later. And then you got now his own crew of people are fucking against him. So Tommy, Team Tommy ain't looking too strong right now. Um and then you have Jason who meets up with Ghost at this building that, that they're trying to do business at. Goes to the metal detector. His people tell him, you should bring a gun. But he's like, no, I can't. This, no, this place, you can't bring guns. This goes right into Ghost's plan. And as they get on the elevator, Ghost opens the box to get the gun that Tommy was supposed to plant so that they could kill Jason. And Ghost realizes when he bends down to tie his shoe and looks at the box, the box is empty. Tommy didn't fucking fall through the plant. Tommy's upset because he thinks Ghost took out Lakeisha and then Jason gets a text and it's from Tommy that's like Ghost is gonna kill you and that's when Jason goes crazy and then they start this big brawl one of the best done fights they've done and uh it was it was fucking it was it was suspenseful man they, they're going at it in this little small elevator go Jason there's no gun so they have to fight and Jason takes like this rope from his watch and he tries to strangle Ghost but Ghost somehow reverses it and strangles Jason in the process and uh Jason ends up being the one that gets uh you know that gets choked out until his face turns blue and then Ghost proceeds to drag him off the roof uh drag him down the elevator up to the rooftop and leaves his body there so Jason's dead finally I knew that was going to happen it was at some point in time and like I said this was the first kill of the season for Ghost Ghost had been passive aggressive all season this is the first time where you see Ghost finally take it back to the essence the origin the, you know of his character um and once he realizes he checks the phone and sees that Tommy crossed him over and then he says okay he texts Dre off Jason's phone and tells him to meet him at that location because remember Dre wants to do business with Jason he doesn't know Jason just got killed by ghosts and he's sitting up there on that rooftop dead. Uh, so that sets up for the for later. And then you got Benny, Proctor's uncle, who we hadn't seen in a couple of episodes since he saved Tariq from Vincent and the Italians. 
then he confronts Ghost about who killed Joey. And he thinks Ghost knows. And then he calls Ghost on his bullshit and says, I got a vibe from Egan that night. And he says, he's going to find him or he's going to cough up some answers or some blood. <laughs> And I'm so I love the, the Benny character. He was on the wire, great actor. I did not like how they did Benny. Um, and when Benny approaches Tommy in the hallway, this narrow hallway, I guess it was front of Tommy's uh, a place. And he's like, I heard, I, I think you killed Joey. And he pulls out this small Boy Scouts pocket knife. And they start tussling over it. And to me, it didn't even make it seem like it It didn't really look like Tommy had to work that hard to kill him. And I'm like, wow, where's the payoff? Because if anybody should have had a good payoff, Elisa Marie's went through so much. I mean, her mother, her father, and back-to-back episodes, now Cousin Benny. I mean, that girl's been through fucking hell. And Proctor was a civilian. So there's a certain sympathy you have for a civilian when they get killed and murdered down like that. And nothing there's no payoff for practice death now benny does have a crew of people who knows maybe they can run up on tommy and get tommy but right now it looks like tommy's not gonna have to pay for practice death it doesn't seem like at least and speaking of tommy um he meets up with Tariq and tasha to talk about ghosts and he's basically saying look i'm sorry i know that's ghost but he's gotta go and he tells them about lakeisha and tasha puts on this oscar worthy performance she had no idea she died <laughs> and uh and Tariq, he knows his mother and father are full of shit. He knows how much they lie. And he looks at her like, bitch, please. So at the time he leaves, he looks at her like, you really didn't know? And then that's when she admits that she killed uh, Lakeisha and that she did it for the family, to protect the family. We got to stop lying to each other. That's why we in this mess. And then when he sees the bruise on her arm that Ghost gave her, that ticks him off. And that's when he's like, okay, you should have let me know so I can protect you. So... He's that right there lets Tariq know that it's all about him and his mama and he can't fuck with his pops no more. Um, now you go to Dre, Dre gets set up by ghosts and he goes up to the to the rooftop looking for Jason. He sees the dead body and security guard spots him with the, with the flashlight. He takes off. Somehow this nigga got nine lives. I don't know how he got away from this shit, but he did. Um, Rashad Tate goes to, to Club Truth to talk to James. And he's saying about how, you know what I mean? He, he hired someone to spy on him. He's saying, I know who you are. I know you a drug dealer. I know your name is Ghost. And then Ghost tells him, if you think you know who I am, then I'm, what's stopping me from killing you right here, right now? And then Tate's like, because you know I'm too high profile. And James is like, man, get the fuck out of my place of business. You know, so Tate is fucking pissed. And he still doesn't know, you know. And then Ramona tells him that, you know, James is going to be the lieutenant governor. So Tate is fucking hot. He's going to go out of his way to make sure that ghost goes down by any means. So now the one person you haven't seen this whole episode was Cooper Sacks. He's at a strip club. Bianca finds him. He comes up with the idea to corner Tasha. Mind you, he doesn't no longer work for the, for the U.S. Fed's attorney. He doesn't work for the feds anymore. But so she really has no business dealing with him. So now she's gotten on the dirty side of the game fucking with him. But she knows he, he's been tracking this story down way longer than her. So he comes up with the idea, we should strong on Tasha about Keisha's missing, Keisha's death. They do it, they corner her, and he uses her, her marriage to basically get her to force her information out of her. And he says, what about all the times James embarrassed you in public you know humiliated you publicly and they show flashbacks to him out with angela him getting her getting her place raided you know him strangling terry silver the one man that she thought she loved and then and then they also corner her when bianca says it's either him or Tariq, and we'll question why where was he at the night of raymond jones murder and that's where tasha gives up the location of terry silver's body i had no idea she knew where he was put at I don't know how she found out because Ghost barely even admitted that he did it. But she gives him the location at the airport and they discover this car and the doors open and they pop the trunk and Terry's body's in the trunk. Now, Sax searches the front of the car and finds an iPhone, but he keeps it to himself. He doesn't tell Bianca because he feels that he wants to get the St. Patrick's family, but he also wants to screw over the feds because they fired him. So he's playing two birds with one stone. So he keeps this to himself and gives it to Dre 
and tells Dre to plant this at Ghost's house so we can frame Ghost for this murder. You know, and you got to realize because Sax is no longer working for them, so he's got two different agendas. And then finally, the episode ends with the, you know, the father-son fight of the fucking, I don't know, this is, this is brutal. And like I say, this is, this is basically, this is 50's relationship with his older son, in a sense. And Tariq goes to Ghost's club, he throws him his house keys and says, I'm gone. And he basically walks out of his life and he's like, you may have, you know, brought me into this world, but you'll never be my fucking father. And you could tell Ghost was hurt by that shit. That shit really hurt Ghost. If there's one character on this show, because Ghost is a tough motherfucker, but if there's one person that's his weakness on this show, it's Tariq. Tariq can break him down like nobody else. And people say, well, why won't he slap him? Why won't he? He already put a gun to the boy's head. Like Tariq said, what else can you do to me? I'm not afraid of you anymore. And Ghost, you know, Tariq is his weakness. So Ghost has now lost his son to his mother. And no matter how much he's, you know, provided for the boy, the boy don't want nothing to do with him. And you got to feel that, you know, that, that's, that's pretty fucked up that the mother's turned uh, the son against the father like that. But that, that's how this episode ends. And I don't know. This was the mid-season finale. I don't know when we're going to get the, uh, the rest of the, the next slate of episodes. Hopefully we don't have to wait till 2020. I got a feeling we might, though. I'm not sure. But this episode was, was dope, man. This was intense. I, I, I enjoyed it. Um, scorched Earth. Episode 9, the mid-season finales is always dope. They always got a season finale type of feel, but this episode was dope, man. Let me know what y'all think. I'm out.